Creative Assembly once again plunges us into a historical event with a new title filled with battles, cities raised to the ground and devotion to the gods. My name is Catalina and this is a video review for Total War Troy. There are few games that are able to stay current after more than 20 years on the market, offering releases with a sufficient degree of regularity to satisfy their faithful customer base. If we add the fact that the release was free for 24 hours and that it's based on one of the most well-known and studied historical events, the results exceed all expectations. Total War Saga Troy has both its successes and also other things to improve, but it seeks to be the doorway into this universe for many new players and redeem itself in the minds of veterans of the series. Creative Assembly knows what buttons to press to gain attention for each one of its launches, maybe with a captivating story like the one sprung from the mind of Homer. The campaign tells us about the conflict between the Danons and the Trojans, sparked by the kidnapping of Helen, wife of Menelaus, by Paris, prince and heir to Troy. Menelaus, upon finding out who kidnapped his wife, asks his brother Agamemnon to join his cause and raise arms against Troy to recover his wife. The great generals and lords of this story, eight in total, are the playable characters that we'll be able to choose from, each with their own game system and unique victory conditions. On the side of the Danans, we'll be able to choose Agamemnon, Menelaus, Achilles and Odysseus. The Trojans brings us Sarpedon, Hector, Aeneas and Paris. Each one offers a different initial scenario, the difficulty pre-established by the game in this case, but also their own game style. For example, as a recommendation to start, Total War Troy suggests Agamemnon on one side and Sarpedon on the other. Both have an easy initial scenario, with a good base of resources to spend on armies and buildings, in addition to a location on the map that makes expanding easier. Easy. If you've never played Total War, the tutorial teaches the basics and there's a pop-up help system with suggestions each turn. Both of these will give you an idea as to where to begin and what to do to move forward. Each hero has two ways in which he can achieve victory. One they all have in common, called Absolute Victory in War, is the classic Total War mode and is achieved by controlling or raising 100 settlements. The second way is the Homeric victory, unique to each hero. For example, in Achilles' case, reaching the maximum level is already a victory because he's proved to be the best warrior walking the earth. Paris, on the other hand, must earn 600 points of favor from Aphrodite. As usual in Total War, every territory is divided into provinces, which in turn are split into settlements, two of which generate resources, and the last is the province capital, from where we'll manage economic, diplomatic and military growth. Unlike other games in the franchise, Troy has an updated system of resources, almost like a Catan game. In each settlement, we'll generate a specific resource like food, lumber, stone, gold or bronze. We'll use each of these to build new buildings, expand our army or barter for a single exchange or for a longer period with a faction we want to negotiate with. All these resources can also be obtained by occupying enemy settlements which makes it easier to access resources we lack. Since it's an epic, and as time went on, everything told by Homer was put into doubt, even his existence. The gods will give us their help by means of plagues or catastrophes. Devotion to the gods will help us in different ways. For instance, if our devotion is towards Zeus, we'll have advantages in diplomatic negotiations with all factions. While if our devotion is towards Aphrodite, we'll have an edge in happiness and the growth of our faction. However, just like they'll help us when we give them obeisance, they'll punish us if we don't, so keeping them happy is exceedingly important. In the capital of each province, we'll be able to proclaim a manifesto that will be exclusive to that province to generate more resources or keep the people's happiness intact. In addition, with far more significant adjustments, we'll be able to publish decrees based on each resource, 
This will be our skill tree. These decrees will take a certain number of turns to activate, but their effects are very noticeable from generating a certain quantity of a resource to giving a discount to our army's maintenance. If you've never played Total War, you should know that the main campaign is turn-based, but the battles are in real time and we have to instantly choose which will be the best way to position ourselves on the battlefield to attack or avoid an ambush. In Total War Troy, most units are infantry and their movement speed will depend on their armor, which can be light, medium or heavy. One of the most important departures from previous releases is that we'll be able to keep certain units, like archers and javelin men, hidden in the grasses to ambush opposing forces, causing their morale to fall quickly and making them abandon the battlefield even when they have numerical superiority. Knowing how to place our units will be crucial to achieve a quick victory. Our units gain experience from each battle, which will increase the military rank of each platoon. This helps them avoid rapid drops in morale or gives them greater attacking power as a group. The army is only answer to an epic hero or a general we recruited, and each will be able to control an army consisting of up to 20 platoons. All battles can be played manually, or we can let the game automatically decide calculating the probability of victory for each side according to the characteristic of each army. It is often not advisable to let the game automatically resolve the outcome. Heroes and generals increase in level as we complete missions, which may be special or common or if they face battle. We win an ability point per level and will have to choose between two options depending on our gameplay, which will be aimed more at the lethality of our army or maintaining its high morale. In addition, as the turns pass, our hero or general gains traits according to the actions we've taken. For example, while laying siege to a city, the defenders might weaken a turn earlier than they would have otherwise. We can also equip each hero or general with weapons, armor, shields and chariots, as well as special objects to increase their stats. We earn them by killing opposing generals or they might be gifts from the god we pray to. If we build the right buildings, like ones for administration or temples, we'll be able to hire emissaries, priests and spies as special agents. The first two can be annexed to an army for a specific role, like carrying out a ritual to raise morale or reduce its maintenance cost. They can also be sent to enemy settlements to foster disorder or discontent. Spies can poison the opposing enemy's supplies or infiltrate settlements so that we can gain information about the movements of the faction we're going to attack. Agents can increase their level and just like heroes and generals, we must choose between two available abilities so that they can be more effective. Diplomacy in Total War Troy isn't the best, but it gives us the necessary tools to make an agreement enter into effect. If we're unsure with what faction we have the best chances of reaching a military or commercial agreement, we just have to press the quick negotiation button and negotiate with the first one that comes up. How easy these negotiations are depends on our influence and military strength, or we might directly make another faction our vassal to then annex their territory through a confederacy. Each decision we make affects our credibility, and if it's too low, it will be very hard for another faction to accept agreements. For a game based on an epic poem, it makes sense that we'd be able to play with mythological units, like centaurs, giants, or minotaurs, and be able to recruit them into our armies. But Total War Troy doesn't do this in a particularly epic manner. The Minotaur is just a person of considerable size that wears the skin and skull of an ox, nothing like the myth describes. The same is true of the centaurs, who are merely exceedingly able riders. Since they're special units, they can't be recruited in every settlement and in addition, the building to house them must be built. There's something important we must keep in mind with respect to Total War Troy. It's a spin-off, not a pure blood game. And what do I mean by this? If you've played earlier games of the franchise, you'll find that many systems are missing and those that aren't might not be as complete. For example, if we compare many of the mechanics and systems already mentioned in last year's game, Three Kingdoms, you'll realize that the diplomacy as well as how generals are assigned at court are quite different. This is also true of the makeup of our armies. In Total War Three Kingdoms, we can have up to three generals per army, while in Troy we are limited to one. 
Creative Assembly tends to use these games to test the waters, where they'll try new mechanics and systems, study the public's reaction, and then define whether they will use them in later releases or see how to improve them to achieve the desired effect. If we only consider the three titles of Total War Saga, including Troy, this latest is the best in every respect. Not only because of its graphics and technical details, but also in its gameplay and the challenge set by the AI in the campaign, which obviously means, to a greater difficulty, a darker road ahead. It was a very interesting and noteworthy move for them to offer it for free for 24 hours, as was the announcement of a series of free DLCs together with a multiplayer system a mode which will be available starting in November. Total War Troy is more geared towards the battles, and this is very noticeable, especially as regards how the story is told and how basic certain systems are. However, the most important aspect is that it perfectly meets its objective. We become a sponge and we can sink this for hours and hours because of how entertaining it is to play, and this is more than enough. A Total War Saga Troy earns an 8 as a final grade. Can it be recommended? Yes, it's highly recommendable, especially if you got it for free, because it has one of the best storylines. Is it the best of them all? No, but it's the most accessible one for new players. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to turn on notifications. Follow us on social media and visit www.malditosnerds.com to stay up to date with the latest video game news. Thanks for joining us and see you next time.